Alexa, play Autumn in New York by Ella Fitzgerald. Autumn in New York, featuring Louis Armstrong by Ella Fitzgerald on Amazon Music. I know this video has absolutely nothing to do with fall, like literally nothing to do with fall, but I really just want to mention guys, like fall is my happiest season. It is literally my happiest season. If you guys see me in higher spirits in my videos on social, you know, as of late, it's because it is finally fall and the hot weather is going to go away soon. Not yet in New York. It's it's still pretty freaking hot. Fall is all like, you know, crunchy and peaceful. And then winter is just like freezing and I, I'm just freezing. I'm living in New York City in autumn at age 23 and I just, it's just, wild because thinking back to where I was even like a year ago I had no idea that this was going to be my reality and that is kind of just the truth about life it's like you you don't really know where you're gonna be and even like a week from now you know your whole life could flip upside down so that's why I find that like where will you be in five years question like completely stupid because like I don't have any idea and I'm glad that I don't have any idea because life is unpredictable and that's just kind of how it should be because otherwise it's really boring you like work for 35 years and then you eventually retire and then you die and that's it so yeah okay that was like a lot in the beginning of this video I'm sorry for like overloading you guys with just like blah, 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 me talking and blabbing about random stuff today I'll be answering your questions and kind of just going in to the whole you know job hunt just everything leading up even like a few years ago my internship search all sorts of things job related are going to be discussed in this video and I guess before I get into all that I guess I'll talk about what I'm actually doing now like where I landed and then I'm gonna back up and tell you guys how I got there so basically I talked about this in a few videos ago but just for all of you guys who might not have seen that I work at L'Oreal Paris which is a branch or it's like a, a company within L'Oreal Group which I, I didn't realize were two different things L'Oreal Group like L'Oreal no Paris, L'Oreal, has a ton of companies below it, or like they they basically own a ton of companies. Maybelline is owned by L'Oreal, had no idea that that was a big thing I didn't really know before joining the company. Maybelline, Lancome, um, Urban Decay, a ton, a ton of makeup, a ton of skincare as well. L'Oreal Paris is one of those companies that L'Oreal owns and it's basically the namesake brand so it's the one brand that actually carries the name of the greater entity so it's very very special so within L'Oreal I am the social media coordinator for L'Oreal Paris Cosmetics and basically I, that encompasses social media but it also encompasses digital content creation basically all content that is created for the digital space I coordinate slash help create and that looks a million different ways I do so many different things within that so I you know create content I edit the content I even before that plan the content you know, anything that has to do with digital content or social media I help out with which is very very cool because I'm actually utilizing my major which was communication design um, and also just everything I've ever done in my life you know creating my YouTube channel doing all that just being very active on social has quite literally prepared me for this moment, prepared me for this job, which is so, so cool that I'm able to use my major and not say the college, which is like four years of like, you know, whoop de doo I go into the office around nine o'clock in the morning every day. So I work all day. Um, I can get lunch off, an hour of lunch, but I, I sometimes just decide to work through it. So I do that during the day and then I get off work around like six-ish, six-thirty-ish. Um, come home either you know film a video do a podcast you know the work actually never does stop for me really um, but as you guys know I love it I love to create I quite literally live to create so it's no biggie for me and I'm kind of used to like having a million things on my plate and sleeping like nothing so I'm one of those crazy people that actually you know gets very uncomfortable by having a lot of free time like it actually like really freaks me out um, it kind of makes me think that I like am forgetting to do something I had to move the camera because my battery died but we're back okay so yeah I love my day-to-day -day. It's, it's exactly what I imagined and I really am happy with it so far it's only been three and a half months but I already feel totally comfortable in the work environment I feel like I'm a part of a team obviously I will be the new person until there's another new person or like a newer new person you know so yeah I definitely do feel new still but not as you know uncomfortably new as you often do like the first weekend so based on my demographics you guys are all kind of ranging in ages so I'm just gonna basically 
you know, tell it how it is, and I hope I'm not going to freak any of you guys out who haven't even, like, started looking for jobs yet, because, hate to break it to you guys, it's actually a lot harder than you think. Even if you're insanely qualified, it's like, there's a million other people that are just as qualified as you are, and it's really stressful, really frustrating, believe me, you're not alone if you are also feeling very frustrated with the job hunt, so... I'm going to try to give you guys all the tips I possibly can. So kind of to, in a nutshell, talk about my internship process. I didn't really do the whole internship thing too much because I had my own business and I was kind of running that and that was kind of enough for me to show that I like, you know, have experience with things. That was like really lucky. So I definitely do encourage you guys to create your own blogs, create your own websites, you know, try to run your own thing and just like have a lot in your portfolio. I've talked about this before, you know, especially in the creative realm, the digital realm. It's really, really important to have a very solid portfolio, especially a digital portfolio, one that can be accessed online and have everything right smack dab there when an employer looks you up. They can see all your videos, all your photos, all your art, everything that you do digitally, all your writing, you know, samples and stuff like that in one place. So I definitely recommend a digital portfolio. That's probably one of the best things I did. So I had an internship last summer for about two months. It was kind of honestly was just kind of something to put on my resume. It wasn't anything I was extremely passionate about. It was social media. I'm not gonna really talk about that very much because it was kind of lackluster, not like something I really reflect back and I'm like, that was an amazing internship. Not gonna bash the company or the people involved, but I just, it wasn't, wasn't for me and I'm now aware of that. So sometimes you gotta try things that you aren't really happy with and then you figure out uh, you learn that you're not happy with that. So yeah, I feel like kind of right off the bat senior year I was like bombarded with all this stress about the job hunt. Senior year is like exciting and fun and you're like doing everything for the last time So you're crying a lot and then you're also stressed about like the job. It's just it's crazy I'm very thankful that I'm over that Hump to be really transparent with you guys I started out senior year and I had absolutely no freaking clue at all what I wanted to do and I was kind of like dismissing it like oh, I'll figure it out kind of thing like oh, I'm just gonna go out and not think about it and then I was like wait I should probably think about it and then I was like nah I'm not gonna think about it and I was like oh anyway a lot of conflicted feelings I really had no idea what I wanted to do post-grad I didn't even really know what I liked to do in a business sense like I knew what I liked to do like on my own time and with my own platforms but I was like I don't know what I want to do in a corporate sense and I don't know what I want to do for a company. I definitely was presented with a unique situation because I am a YouTuber and so I could, you know, feasibly make a living off of this and, you know, make this my end-all be-all, like my job. Um, but then I kind of realized over time that if that were the case, like if this became my full-time job, my only source of income, first of all, I'd make living in New York pretty darn tricky, but also you know, I, it wouldn't really be fun anymore for me. And I'm really happy with my decision to do both and to not just do YouTube, not just have a job and like quit YouTube. I, I'm really trying to balance both and it's been tricky. I've had to make some sacrifices. A lot of you guys ask how I balance my YouTube channel and my job and my social life and the, you know, answer is kind of complicated answer is like I'm just very conscious of my time and I you know have to plan things I have to be a planner I know it's like you know not as spontaneous and fun but I have to be a planner I have to write things down I have to you know create reminders for myself and set you know alarms we're kind of getting towards the end of senior year now in my reflecting so towards the beginning of my second semester of senior year was kind of when you know, the job hunt took full force and like was in the front of my brain. Like I, I was thinking about it all the time. I reached out to so many people, <laughs> like so many people, a lot of connections that I happened to have either through my sorority, a lot of them were through my sorority, um, or just through my school because Elon, my college is a very small school. So it is close knit in terms of the alumni. I went through and perfected my LinkedIn. If you guys check out my LinkedIn, it's pretty perfected. I really like put down every single thing I did in college because I actually was extremely involved in college, which really did help me. So if you guys, you know, are a freshman or a sophomore, word to the wise, get involved as much as you possibly can on campus because that gives you things you can talk about during your job interviews, you know, leadership examples. Trying as many things as you possibly can is great, you know, towards the beginning of college. It definitely does speak volumes if you are, you know, a leader in your organization or if you have a leadership position if you you know have some sort of title that isn't just like staff writer or like staff member you know having like a real title like an editor of a magazine or uh, I don't know like I was social chair for my sorority so that really helps like having some sort of leadership position is important as well um, just something upon your resume that shows that you like really 
are loyal, you stuck with it, you really worked hard, that sort of thing. Anyway, I really perfected my LinkedIn. I reached out to so many people, as I mentioned, girls that had graduated, really anyone and everyone. I asked my parents, I you know, asked people around my town if they have any references, any people that are working in social media. I looked in the social media, the digital space. I also looked in PR in New York City. I knew I wanted to be here. Try to schedule phone calls. That's a big thing. You know, Don't come out and be like, hi, can I have a job? Because that's like nine times out of 10 probably not going to work for you but my big recommendation is you know reaching out to someone who's in an industry that either interests you or that you want to pursue and ask them to you know hop on a phone call with you and see if you can chat with them on the phone because you know even if they don't offer you a job you're at least on their radar and you're in their scope and they might consider you for future jobs and stuff like that. So LinkedIn is your best friend. Also, as I mentioned previously, digital portfolio is huge. You guys can check out mine. I'll link it down below. At one point in time, I had my resume on it, but I accidentally put my phone number on it and people were calling me, so I took it down, but I'm gonna actually re-upload that without my phone number so you guys can maybe see a template for my resume. Um, I think that would actually be helpful. Would you guys like me to show you guys like resume templates and things? Because I kind of like was like a nerd and like designed mine all cool and it was like all like consistent and cool. But yeah, so I use Weebly to make my digital portfolio site and basically I have all of my stuff on there. I never got a job from any of those calls, but they're constantly, you know, checking in. You know, people have actually reached out and they're like, oh, do you want to come in for an interview and I'm like well now I have a job but thanks for that <laughs> you know but yeah so I definitely encourage you guys to hop on the phone with as many people as you possibly can as you guys know I am an influencer and I've worked with L'Oreal in the past you know as an influencer I was on the L'Oreal League I went to the Golden Globes with L'Oreal I did a lot of stuff actually my first ever collaboration with L'Oreal was three years ago freshman year four years ago so yeah it was a long time ago so I've known the team I've known the digital and social team actually for so long I got very close with the digital and social teams you know I just feel like we really clicked and I really liked the spirit of L'Oreal the just the feeling that I felt when I was with that team it was just something unlike any other team I've worked with and so I always had this little like you know childish little dream that I would work for L'Oreal. It's a brand that you know. It's a brand that you've heard of. It's like one of those things where it's like, wow, that is, that's, that's it. It's L'Oreal. It's wow. I'm going to keep this kind of vague since I did just get my job and I don't want to like go into the full nitty gritty details. Maybe some other day I will, but basically I got a call that changed my life, which I will add getting, you know, a job at L'Oreal entry level is next to impossible because you kind of have to go through an internship process with L'Oreal because they do this whole process of like, you're a 12 month intern and then you get you know an offer after that if you kind of like pass as an intern you do this whole presentation it's just this thing you work up to and essentially I kind of skipped that um, because this person that called me and kind of you know gave me the opportunity to interview really believed in me and believed in my work ethic and I guess you know I kind of have to give myself a pat on the back because I will you know not even recount how many countless you know, sleepless nights I've spent the past just eight years on YouTube just, you know, perfecting my craft and really working hard at my social media, at my, you know, my theme, my consistency, like just like little things that I, I never really realized that companies were looking at or that would be valuable. If you work hard, you will reap benefits eventually. And it might take a while. If you work hard, you will reap benefits. There were times where people thought that I was absolutely out of my mind crazy for doing this, for putting my life on the internet, for you know being so open and for really you know creating a name for myself online and talking to strangers. You know, people thought I was crazy in high school. I was ruthlessly bullied for it. You know, all those years of people doubting me, people talking about me behind my back. All of those years and all of that BS is worth it now because I am sitting in a very awesome position, meaning that I am finally where I've always wanted to be. I read this quote once that I fully, like, I'm obsessed with and it's, I want to make beautiful things even if no one cares. And I think that was kind of like my mantra way back when in 2009 when I was like creating content for no one. It was like, you know, I wanted to make beautiful things, even if no one cared about it, and eventually people did care about it, and that was just like, you know, by a stroke of luck, I guess, that someone told someone who's, you know, told someone to watch these videos, and look where it got me. I have been beaten down in more ways than one on this planet, as has, like, everyone, but, you know, I just try to treat the world a little bit better than it treated me in certain situations. You know, when I was being really bullied and I was 
very, very miserable, not really seeing a light at the end of the tunnel, like I still looked at the world with a smile and with passion and I didn't let it stop me. And I think that that ultimately was part of the reason why I am where I am now. So yeah, just try to treat the world a little bit better than it treats you. Basically networking is key. I know everyone and their mother has told you that networking is key, but you know, don't feel like you're a burden or a bother when you reach out to people because believe me, like those people have been in your shoes. I promise you, you'll feel a whole lot better about everything if you have like a very stacked portfolio. So that's a big tip I have. I asked you guys to ask me some questions and my phone died so I can't even look at them, but I hope I answered your questions in this video and if you have any additional ones, comment them down below and I will try my best to answer you that way or someone else might, you know, be able to answer you better than I can. So, okay, yeah, that's it. Bye. <laughs>